My name is Nicole and welcome to the 22nd episode of Al Sol y Punto. Okay, so I am between a road and a river and this is just the intro. I just wanted to say hello before I plug in all the clips that I have previously recorded. So hopefully the sound quality will be a bit better than the noisy road and the flowing river. Um, in this episode, we're going to be talking about natural dyes, about knitted projects, about adventures, about through hiking, which is a new obsession. Um, make your own gear. Did you know that that was a thing? M-Y-O-G? It is. Um, as always, we will talk about a plant at the end of the episode, and today we're going to be talking about peaches. Right? Summer peaches? That's amazing. And lots of things. So if you're interested in this knitting podcast, stick around. We will be talking about lots of stuff, going back to the future, going to the present. Oso will make some appearances. There'll be bikers. Yeah, so thanks for being here. Thanks for tuning in to these shenanigans. Um, yeah. Again, this is a bilingual podcast, so if you want to watch it in Spanish, just head on over to the other video and enjoy. Hi friends, here I am looking out onto a field of Hypericum, which is now dried and going to seed, just like the summer, <laughs> past the summer solstice, and I'm already thinking of autumn, that's okay. I wanted to show you my Hypericum dye experiments. I've done some more and I'm going to do more and I want to show you some other things. So as you might remember, I showed you last time, these are Hypericum and Hypericum with iron. And then I dyed some mohair with Hypericum. But as you can see, this is also at the same time, the same time of harvest, which I probably, the amount that I use and also the fact that it was like already going to seed, I don't know if it affected the color being a lot lighter, but you can see like here the difference. So I dyed this and it is glowy and beautiful and splendid, but I think I want it even more glowy and beautiful and splendid. So I'm going to, today I found Hypericum dried in the herbal shop and I'm going to, I've already made the infusion. So tonight I'm going to give it a bath and we'll see. I think I'll do this one first because I, I am happy with this color, but I think it could get a little bit greener. Lime greeny awesomeness. This is in person. It's just like golden, it's golden. So I'm going to dip this and see what happens. And if it's okay, I'm going to dip this. And what am I going to do with this? You might ask. <gasps> suka shawl, suka, suka, suka shawl. So do you remember that I won from the Beltane swap? Not one, not two, but three skeins full of dog hair. The dog hair comes from my house um, of Colosco wool. The other third ball is already uh, wound up because I'm going to use this and this together to make a, so uh, a shawl suka. Who else is with me on this on the suka summer? Did you guys get your free pattern? It's brioche and it's amazing and it's really fun if you have any questions. And there is a brioche cowl. Have you seen the video about the brioche cowl knit along? There's a there's a telegram group. We're all there. Right now everyone's speaking in Spanish, but it's bilingual, so anyone can come and we will speak all the languages. So, I'm so excited about this combination, but I feel like I want it to be a little bit more golden. I don't know. Actually, honestly, looking at it here, I like it. And I think together it's gonna be really pretty. So these skeins are from Colosco Wool 
and this one's called chocolate, which I think means chocolate. And this one is called Ara in this cello. Ara in this cello. And I think it is from, okay, now I'm gonna mix in Huesca. Okay, so I was looking up, so Huesca is Aragon. Am I messing it up now? Um, I should look it up. But I'm pretty sure that in the language there, this cello is like this yellow. So I was like looking up what it meant. I don't know, actually I want to contact them and find out exactly what it means. But I think it means like in like the defrosting of the winter mountains, which I think is so perfect for like this summer shawl that I'm going to knit. It's gonna be a winter shawl, but I mean, I'm gonna knit it in the summer with the summer flower and it's gonna be awesome. So. Yeah, and then this one is going to be socks, which I'm going to bring with me on the Camino of Santiago. I'm going to knit them while I'm walking. Isn't that awesome? I'm so excited. More things. Okay, and before I get interrupted by more bikers, because I was just recording in Spanish and um, bikers and there's flies, it's getting to that hour where you can't be out here because everyone's preparing for coming knitting and everyone's walking and then I feel embarrassed that I'm talking to a tree with my phone on it and <laughs> got a bunch of yarn in front of me but I wanted to show you what else I won as a giveaway Primavera in Sevilla this is a collaboration for Sevilla Teje the Mar de Ovillos y Liando Hilos and I won this yarn the Liando Hilos and it's bamboo and lino, 70% 70, 70 bamboo and 30% linen. And you can see this one has like speckles of beautiful colors and this one no. And it's like a shawl that you knit starting with three stitches and go out and back in, I think. I don't know. We're gonna try it out, I'm so excited. And I won this from Adelita Adela who has like a little podcast on on Instagram so if you speak Spanish I want to watch her and she always does them live and she shows like all the amazing things she's knitting and all the wonderful yarn and everything um, so I'll leave her information down below and she did a giveaway and me and Erica and Isa won and we all know each other and we're all friends and Adela was like hmm this is strange that you guys win people are gonna think that it was like rigged but it wasn't rigged it's just I think all knitters we all know each other so anyone who would have won would have been special but I'm so excited and she already sent it to me with some Marseille soap so it smells really good and I'm going to knit my shawl to wear to next year's Sevilla Teje knitting festival so next time you see me I'll be knitting that see you soon I just wanted to show you Oregon grape Look at that, Oregon grape. But because it's, and this is Hypericum, look at that combo. Or look at this combo. Oh my God, look at that, wow. So this is a very dark natural dye mixing some things together. And this I know stays, but this, because it's a berry, who knows? So I put the date on it. We're gonna see what happens. But I just wanted to show you Oregon grape. Hi. Okay, so we are here in my home. Um, I thought that it would be cooler and calmer to record in the comfort of my house. And I have lots more things to show you here. For example, this is something that my mama made. I don't know if anyone has any ideas of what we could do with this, but she gave it to me, she sent it to me because, um, I think I've shown this in another episode, but because there are hummingbirds. Can you imagine? Like, I don't even know how she did this. It's actually really beautiful in the back too. Um, and so you can see the hummingbirds. And in Spanish, um, hummingbird is colibri. And my name is Nicole, and my family always called me coli. So colibri was perfect. Um, and I, she 
because I had been like sewing and stuff, we thought that maybe I could like make a pillow out of it. Um, but for now, it's just on the back of my like knitting chair, which is nice because it keeps me nice and warm in this 104 degree summer. Um, I also wanted to uh, show you my like favorite snack these days. Also, I'm not going to open the window. He wants to like sit on the balcony in the sun. It's really hot for that, but all right, fine. Okay, we will see how long that lasts, but that's like his favorite spot. But he lasts for like five minutes there, and then he's like, no more. So yeah, I should probably cut this part off. I, I don't know, I was gonna like turn it into a pillow, but I don't really know how to do that, so. Um, yeah, but I wanted to show you my snack. The reason why I wanted to talk about peaches today is because I've been obsessed with peaches. So what I do is I just take two peaches, cut them into pieces, and then I put like a spoonful of honey, and I like shake it up, and I put it in the fridge, and it like makes them all soft and juicy and delicious, so super awesome I'm I'm sure I'm not the first person to think of that but it's really really yummy okay so knitting stuff um, I am wearing my Sol y Yolo top so this is a pattern that I designed it's really easy it's just like the feather and fan you do two squares of the feather and fan you can alternate colors the way I did and then you like um, like pick up on the sides, knit together, like graft it, you like graft it up here. Do a, you could do like an eye cord around the edge. The reason why I had the window closed is because my street is noisy. Like I said, he'll last there for like two minutes. You guys wanna see where he is, hold on. Like seriously? <laughs> also, are you hot over there? Oh, uh, anyway. So uh, this is my Sol y Yodo top, which means sun and iodine. And that's what I use to refer to the beach. Sol y Yodo, because when you go in the sea, you get all the wonderful iodine and minerals from the ocean and the water. And yeah, so this is Sol y Yodo, and this was knit in this Life in the Long Grass, and the colorway is French Lavender. And this is Hedgehog Fibers, and the colorway is Piggy Bank. Um, actually, yesterday I attempted to do an Instagram Live with the girls, the twins of Twin Aura Knits. And we had some technical difficulties because of my mobile phone, which is really, it doesn't connect very well to the internet. It does for a little bit, and then it just like heats up and it doesn't want to... Um, do a live anymore so then so the live is in three parts so you could watch it on their Instagram and then on mine but I think I think it's uh, I don't know if Jess or I think Jess is knitting with piggy bank in her what the fade shawl and so she is knitting the what the fade for our soul brio cal which is our knit along to knit brioche which runs from um, June, the solstice in June of 22, and then the equinox in September of 2022. So if you want to get in on that, they are donating like this amazing pack of like six skeins of like hedgehog fibers to do your own what the fade. I kind of want to win. I don't know if I can win in my own cal. I don't think so. But it's an amazing prize. And as always, I'm going to be giving away stitch markers. Maybe I'll show you some new ones at the end of the video. I don't know. Um, and yeah, there will be stitch marker prizes, lots of prizes. And yeah, so join the Sol Brio Cal. We have, it's like a bilingual Cal. So yeah, he's done. He's done with the sun. That was fast. <laughs> now we'll close the window. We just came from like a seven mile hike. So he got lots of vitamin D, but he needed just a little bit more. And now he's panting in the corner in his neck. Oh, oh, so <laughs> you like touch his forehead and he is just hot. How, why would you, why would you here? Let's see where he sits, this is his spot. He sits next to my knitting chair. Hi, baby. Se mucho calor, no? It's like really hot. <laughs> anyway, well. Um, so the Sol Brio Cal 
join us. We have a Telegram group and we're talking in there in Spanish, but that's just because everyone in there right now speaks Spanish. But we would love to have English speakers as well. The idea is like to have kind of a language exchange too, which I think is fun. And, but if you want to enter to win the prizes, all you need to do is use the hashtag SolBrioCal22 and like anything, works in progress, swatches, like even if it's your first brioche um, knit, Jess is knitting, Jess from Twin Aura Knits, she is knitting for the first time brioche, she had never done it before and she said she had to start like a thousand times, but that's okay, you can start a thousand times and... Um, just share on Instagram and you will be entered to win some of the prizes. Okay, mm, let's start looking at the knitting, shall we? Um, I'm looking at my basil <laughs> plant and it's not happy so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that in. When I got the basil plant, um, the woman at the shop was like, Kirikaye, kirikaye, it wants to be on the street, it wants to be outside, it wants to be outside, and I don't think she realized how hot my balcony gets, and that plant's not like happy, so I can't look at it suffering. I'm gonna take it in, and we'll be back. Okay, I am back. I had to do some things, but, um, okay. So I want to show you what is living in my Little Mermaid bag. So again, I, I don't know if I mentioned this in English, but this is, was a gift from my dear, dear Ale, who is also the person who gifted me this yarn to, to knit this. And if you don't know who Ale is, Ale is my sister-in-law, and she is also known as Tackle Knits. Um, her dog is a teckle and his name is Pepino, which means cucumber in Spanish. And Alejandra makes wonderful, like, natural products. Um, my favorite is her shampoo. She can make solid shampoos, like, personalized to your hair type. Very nice. Highly recommended. Um, I know that for some friends she has been making like personalized solid shampoos and it's really nice for like traveling and stuff, you know? Um, but she made me a cami knitting uh, piernas cansadas, which means tired legs. But I told her that I don't have tired legs, I have strong legs. Um, but, but yeah, so she gifted me this project bag. So I'm using it for the summer to knit my Suka shawl. Um, Suka shawl is a pattern that I talked about earlier. Um, it's my pattern. It's super easy. It's just brioche and it just grows and you can make it as big or as small as you want. The fun part is that you're knitting it with like two different weights of yarn. So, I have a fingering weight, and this is Colosco wool, um, and they are from Huesca, which is in Asturias, I believe, and the name of this is Deschelo, which I think means, like, snow melts, or like river, I don't know, I need to, still haven't asked them. Um, and I'm knitting it with my Hypericum dyed mohair. So in the end, I didn't end up doing another double bath. Um, I can show you. I think that the last time in, in my other part of the video, I was talking about over dyeing this yarn with more Hypericum. And I used dried Hypericum that I bought in the shop. And this is much more of like a brownish color and I liked this goldeny yellow. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna leave this. I'm not gonna over dye it with the, with the golden brown dry. Um, I also have Vital Vitex. Look at how neon this is. This is Vitex, my favorite. Remember I knit that top, I don't know if you remember, but I knit a top by Heather and Hops in this awesome green color. So this is Vitex leaves. I and this is high golden hypericum, and this is a beautiful mohair 
from TNT Gap. And she sent me the, the base. Actually, this was dyed. It had like a very, very light um, color on there and I just over dyed it. It was like a very light green and then I just over dyed it with the Hypericum and it came out that color. And here's my little baby Suka. Um, there's not much, but brioche is reversible, but technically this is my right side because I'm doing the um, super, super, super increases with the mohair and actually I think that it might be easier to do super increases with the fingering weight so you can choose color A to color B whatever you want but in the pattern um, I wrote it as the thinner yarn being color A and that's the right side where you do like the increases the lateral increases and then the super increases um, but yeah I, I love it. It has like such a, a halo-y golden glow. Look at that. Oh. And I think it also is really cool when it's like the background. I actually really like this side. So this will be a shawl for the autumn. I love it. Actually, now that I'm looking at it on, it reminds me of my Cuello Salteña, which I gifted to my brother and he told me, how can I get rid of the fuzz? And I was like, what? What do you want to do with the fuzz? But obviously he is sensitive to mohair. I should have known that because my, my little brother has sensitive skin with things, so. So, totally gonna steal that back next time I see him. <laughs> I'll trade him for something else. Um, but yeah, this is my Suka shawl. I'm really loving knitting it. It's so, enjoyable and just you just go and if you want you print out the pattern and you can just be like crossing out when you do each like side and then you don't get lost and you don't have to worry I mean you really can read your knitting like you can just be like okay well when was the last time I did a side increase you do it every four four stitches so you can kind of see but Fun. This is the, the shawl suka, and as I said, it's still free. I don't know. Oh, battery. Oh, the battery. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to leave it up for free, but for now, if you want it, you can get it. My suka shawl. I love it. Um, obviously, if you knit this, you can use it for the sol brio cal, um, and yeah, don't be afraid to. So, I made a I made a boo boo. I don't know what happened, but I like I don't know. I had not there are lots of videos on YouTube about how to fix one row if you like drop a, a brio stitch, but I had two two of these that had fallen down and I couldn't figure out how to fix it. So I just went back. I just knit backwards. I brioched backwards. For like three or four rounds. It was kind of annoying, but whatever. Now it's all better. So if you want to put in lifelines, you could. I don't do lifelines. I just risk having to knit back and forth. And I am using 3.75. And that's it. Suka, Suka shawl. So Suka me is, Suka is like the easy pose, like sitting cross-legged in yoga. And this is an easy knit. And it kind of, sometimes I knit it sitting like that, um, like on the floor, or if I'm like out at the river, I've been taking this with me because it's small enough to like bring with me, not like the sweater that I'm knitting. And I'm enjoying it. So that is my suka, and you should knit a suka too. I'd love to see your version. Hypericum dyed mohair, why not? All right, more things. Okay, so before I show you my Santiago sweater, I just want to do a little bit of shameless self-promotion and show you some stitch markers that I have here that I have made. Um, and 
yeah. So these ones I think are really beautiful. These are soy site, this like green and purple, and then the little ones are moonstone. And they're like iridescent. Those are really beautiful, but probably the last, this will be the last pack that has them because I only have a few of those stones left. But the holes in those stones are really hard, like only a few of them I can actually get on there. But they're really beautiful. And these ones are a little bit bigger. So you can knit with like a bigger size needle, I would say like up to like a nine millimeter or something. But they're really pretty. They're also pretty. These ones are really nice too. These also have the bigger loops. And these have like a gate like green and then like this like tan and sandy color and I love how they're like neutrals you know because you can use them on so many different projects like imagine if you're knitting with some vitex green or like some like brown color wow look at that oh man or like a dark oh, they're so pretty I they're not I feel like they're not really showing up but those are really nice. I like those ones a lot. Oh, and I love these ones. These ones have like a little bit of a smaller ring. But again, up until at least like six millimeters. And they look so pretty. This is Amazonite, which is a stone that... A stone that like helps flow creativity. And then it has this green agate, which I think is really pretty. So those are nice. And then this also has Amazonite. I'm going to use this to show you. And then the, um, the darker ones are uh, Garnet. And these ones have the progress keepers. So two progress keepers and three like ring stitch markers. But the progress keepers you can use has like a ring stitch marker too. These are really pretty. These are so fun for summery, whatever. But I like these. These are Amazonite and this yellow lemon lime crystal. And oh, and the blues, the blues. I a lot of my friends really like blue. And so these are really pretty. These are lapis lazuli and then this green gate mm. and these are also lapis lazuli and then like this like really cool quartz you can see them on this yarn and they're so fun when you knit with like really pretty stitch markers like when you come to them you're like oh look here hi and then these ones i love these ones it's like a mix of different different stones. We've got some agate. All of these ones are the Amazonite for the flow of creativity. Here's a lapis lazuli and jasper. So this one's really pretty too. <laughs> okay, that's enough. That's enough of shameless self-promotion. On to the sweater. Okay. Now we're gonna have a look at the Santiago sweater. I'm calling it Santiago sweater. It's not, doesn't exist. I invented that name. Um, it's a pattern that I invented and just making it up as I go along. And that's okay. So it is living in the Soniara bags with the mimosa flower. What is it? Waddle, waddle in English. A waddle with T's, not D's, not like a duck. And here's my sweater. I've been like carrying this around the house, like if I go knit in the living room or something. And super easy, um, really hot. <laughs> but this is the sweater. So I have a big tangled mess. I have this sleeve just like on holds with some Fide Wow, which I've got, it's too long, but I've just got it all tied up and the stitches are on hold on, on this, which is nice. 
Um, so I stopped knitting this sleeve because I don't know how much yarn I have and I don't know why these had to be so big, but just the way it worked out, they're like big clown sleeves. But I think it's going to be funny. I like it. Does anyone else use DPNs to tie up their hair? Let's see. Do, 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 do. DPNs. I don't know where the like other uh, ones are, so I use it. Um, let me push you away on this rolly table. It's like a crop, oversized, big sleeved clown sweater. Hopefully, it'll be cool in Santiago, and I can wear it like over. My idea is to, like wear it over like a dress or something. I don't know. <laughs> and look like a big clown. So this is yarn from Whistle Bear and I actually had a skein of white, like another mini skein of white and when I picked out these colors my boyfriend helped me and he said that white would be really nice like in between all these bright colors and I don't know why when I was knitting it I just didn't want to put the white and so I didn't but now I don't think I'm going to have enough to make like, I wanted to have it cropped but with like long sleeves. But now it's cropped with huge balloon three quarter sleeves. I don't know what's gonna happen, we'll see. This is, I'm playing just yarn chicken. I've got this much left. <laughs> well, technical difficulties. I was showing you how I'm playing yarn chicken, I think, um, and how this is the yarn that I have left. And something just... Oh, a piece, a piece of logwood that I had in my project bag, which could possibly dye this purple, but no. Um, yeah, so we will see. I will show you when I finish. Um, but this was steaked. I think I talked in the last episode how I created a, an I-cord and then um, picked up stitches along the I-cord and knit, 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 knit. When I got to where I wanted the underarm to start, I think I like cast on some stitches. I did like cast on and then like knit two out of like knit two out of one and then cast another one that I basically added five stitches here and then I knit up the five stitches in stocking net um, here and then later I cut into that so that's how you do a steak if you've never done a steak before it's really easy I just recommend that you use like sticky yarn so this yarn is really rustic and I actually, I don't have any ends to weave in because I have just been doing like, um, like felting the, the yarns together when I change from one color to the other. So this yarn has like two, um, I don't know, like two strands, you know, and I think I explained this as well. So... What I did was I just like untwisted and separated the two strands and then with the other color I just like put the two strands together and then I like wet it with water or with spit, spit splice, spit, spit splicing and then using friction I just joined them together. It wasn't actually, they didn't join together that well but then like when I knit with it it just kind of stayed because it's so sticky. So, um, then I continued knitting up, but with the five stocking knit stitches, and then I put everything on hold. I put ac across the green, I just put all these stitches on hold, and then I divided it into three, and I knit up, I, I left these on hold for the neck, and then I knit up like in garter stitch like up to here and then also on the back so I like knit on these sides and knit on the front knit up I wanted to add some extra in the shoulder area because I thought the sleeves wouldn't be big enough clearly I was wrong so 
So I like wanted to add some more on the on the shoulder part and also like for the neck. I wanted the neck to have a little bit more space. Um, and then I picked up these and did an I cord edge. And then the steak was really fun because I can show you what the steak looks like on the inside. It's not really pretty because, well, I gotta weave in these ends. I do have these ends to weave in, but like nothing here, you know? Um, so I actually, I had this yarn from Mad Fuzzy, who I used to watch her podcast and she dyes yarn. She's in the United States. I don't know if she's, I don't think she's still doing the podcast, but I think she still sells yarn. If you ever see Mad Fuzzy around there, um, I love her yarn. And I, that's like her sock yarn. And I used it because I thought it was like a perfect color. Because first, when you do a steak, you have the five stitches. Imagine these are the five stitches. And like this is the stitch you're going to cut through. So you need to reinforce this one and this one using crochet is one way to do that. So you like knit up single crochet here and then knit up single crochet here and then you can cut through the middle because these are like secured. So in order to secure that, I, yeah, I went up, I did the crochet. I don't know why it's wiggly like that. I think the crochet hook I used was too big. At first I had tried to do it with, to do the crochet with the yarn from the sweater, but that was just too thick and it was just really bulky. So I thought this is a little bit thinner and the color works perfectly. But, um, it's still wiggly, so that's not really that nice, but it's on the inside of the sweater, so I don't care, it's fine. Um, and then I cut, and then I picked up around here to knit the sleeves. And I had to pick up around here like five times, because first it was like really... I picked up way too many stitches, although I picked up like every stitch that I could and it seemed like it was normal, but I had to skip a lot of stitches because if not, like the sleeves were going to be like huge, like butterfly, they were going to be like massive. These are big. You think these are big? I will insert a video. Um, and so yeah, I had to do that like three different times and finally I got it right. I think what I did was I picked up two skipped one, picked up three, skipped one, picked up two, skipped one, picked up three, skipped one. So I was skipping a lot of stitches to make the sleeves. And then I think like every color change, I did a one decrease. I probably should have done more decreases. I probably could have done this like that. <laughs> like decreased all of that and just had like a smaller sleeve. I don't know. I don't know. I could, maybe I should redo these sleeves and make them a lot smaller. And then I would have enough yarn to make them long enough. We will see what happens. I'm still not going to Santiago um, for another, what, 20 days? I'm not leaving for my through hike. My through hike, my hike. Okay, that's another thing I want to talk about. Through hiking and how MYOG, make your own gear, is a thing. Have you heard of that? Well, I wanted, I was thinking about how I wanted to sew my own like little like day pack, like a little bag to just put like water and my knitting in um, for walking from village to village. When I go on this hike across the north of Spain, we're going to be walking about 85 kilometers in five days. So, no, not kilometers, miles, 116 kilometers, um, but about 80 miles um, over five days in the north of Spain. It's gonna be beautiful. We're going with a bunch of knitters. It's called Cami Knitting de Santiago. I'm so excited. And um, yeah, so I we, we're going like super luxuriously and a bus is going to, we're going as like a big group. So we have a bus that actually carries like our backpack, like our luggage from one village to the next. And we just have to walk with whatever we want to bring with us on the walk that day. I think we'll be doing about like 15 miles each morning, which I'm super excited about. And I'm so excited to like go with all the people that we're going with. It's going to be so much fun. And then in the afternoon, we're like knitting. There's like workshops and stuff. Um, so that'll be fun. 
and and yeah um so i was thinking about how i wanted to make my talk to make my day pack and i looked up on youtube like mm, so your own so your own like hiking backpack and i found that make your own gear is a thing there's a hashtag there's like all these people who make their own gear with really ultra light super high tech like moon fabric i don't even know where they get this fabric from i think it's really expensive and it just like weighs nothing but it's super resistant magic of modern technology it's probably made of like petroleum or something i don't know and um through that i fell down the rabbit hole once again because i've been there before like a few years ago i used to be obsessed with watching through hikers in the united states just walk across the country they walk like six months straight from canada to mexico or from mexico to canada like from like the north to the south or like I think there's other trails. There's trails all over the United States, which are absolutely gorgeous. I've never been on, I've been on the Appalachian Trail like a little bit, just probably, I don't even remember. It just sounds familiar that it's some like school trip where they were like, oh, this is part of the Appalachian Trail, which runs from Georgia to Maine. And I want to do that. And I love knitting and watching all these people. And they do vlogs and there's a whole community, like the knitting community, and they're all so funny and I love like all of them. The only thing that really concerns me is like they eat terribly. Like they eat like Twinkies and Twix and sugar and gummies and that's it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm very concerned about their nutrition on this on these like six month hikes like because obviously you can't like pack out like a whole bunch of vegetables like a whole backpack full, because vegetables are a lot of water weight so people just don't eat well at all so that's the one thing that I'm like I don't think I could do that like how would I make my nourishing herbal infusions if I was doing a through hike I don't know um, but six months of hiking across the country sounds awesome but I think I'm going to start with the one week in the Camino de Santiago and we'll see how we feel. Also, I'm like not camping. I'm not carrying my own gear. So it's not really going to be the same thing. And then I was thinking like, what knitting could I bring? I've heard of that. I've heard someone talking about this and they said that when they were doing like a backpacking trip, they brought a project of like super fine lace weight knitting. So you get lots and lots of meters out of lot not a lot of weight so that's the idea you gotta like knit like a really fine project to do these hikes um but yeah so i'm really interested and if anyone is interested in watching any of these vlogs they're really fun to watch people just walk across the country and i don't know <laughs> and you get to see all the views wow the united states is spectacular like there it's so pretty to the they walk over like the mountains in california and like all the way up the coast amazing so through hiking very interesting and i don't know i think that's all i had to say we've been here for a long time um now we'll talk about the plants it's the plant segment and um that's it. I hope that you're doing well. I don't know if I'll see you before I do my my walking trip. So I might see you on the way back and I'll let you know how that went, how incredibly difficult it was in comparison to what I thought. <laughs> like right now I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be a piece of cake. I could do that. But I don't know. We'll see. My goal is to have walked 500 miles before we leave on the 8th of August and right now I don't know what the, ex the exact number is but I think I'm about like 390 that I because I've been like recording and tracking on Strava probably since May or June and I've already done 390 miles it's a lot more kilometers I don't know how many kilometers that is but now I'm looking at it miles because you know the song of I would walk 500 miles. Well, that's what I want to do. I want to walk 500 miles before I go and walk another 80 miles. <laughs> it's another thing. Like, I don't think that like hiking for six months is 
good for your body at all. Like, I think you probably will need, like, knee replacements when you're older and stuff, so that's another thing. I don't know if I need to do that. That sounds bad for my joints and stuff, but really fun. Anyway, 500 miles. Will she make it? Will she do it? I did the math, and all I need to do is, like, five miles a day, and Oso and I do that all the time, so it's fine. Okay. See you soon. Plant time. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about peaches. Prunus persica. It's a deciduous tree in the rose family. And it's used as a flavoring agent. Um, obviously, the, the leaves I'm talking about. But the fruit, obviously, we know peaches. We love peaches. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I love peaches. Um... And the leaves are used medicinally and as a flavoring agent and you can, uh, it is not good to use the raw leaves, please. You must always either like um, dry them and then make them into infusion or like cook with them, but never raw without cooking because there is apparently something called amygdalin which turns into cyanide in um, the digestive system. So please, cooked and dried. Um, the leaves are used to flavor ice cream, pie, tea, wine, prosecco. You can make a marinade or a salad dressing or sauces, but the leaves have medicinal properties and they are good for like congestion or cough. Um, apparently it's a kidney cleanser. Uh, in Italy, it is said that the leaves can help to remove plantar's warts on the bottom of your feet. So they say that you can apply the leaf and then you bury it in the ground. And so they s believe that the wart will disappear before the leaf can deteriorate, which I think that just speaks to the fact that the warts will just eventually go away on their themselves when they want to. <laughs> um, and that really, yeah. Anyway, so they think that peaches are native to China, but were brought to the Mediterranean and Persia via the Silk Road around 2000 BCE. Um, the leaves are like cooling and moistening, sweet, aromatic, and a bit bitter. Um, the primary organ system affinities are the upper GI tract and the uterus and the nervous system. And actually, mm, I read a whole like post by Kiva Rose. I'm going to leave it down below because it was really beautiful talking about peaches and how it's such like a soothing, um, relaxant nervine. It's, in, it's really good for hyperimmune responses, like allergic reactions, maybe to some kind of like sting or bite, um, for digestion, um, yeah. And also, uh, she talked about how it can be used like for nausea, especially nausea related to morning sickness. Um, and how like the cool peach leaves can be really great for that. Also for allergic reaction to venomous insect bites. So you can use like the leaf tincture and you can like put it on, like if you get like a bee sting and someone's allergic to bee stings, obviously if you have like an EpiPen, that's important, but you can try first um, with a little bit of the peach leaf tincture. Um, it's a fragrant nervine, um, and yeah, and so it's the, the, the leaves can soothe nausea, and honestly, I've even found that, like, eating peaches, like, w probably, like, two weeks ago, I had one day where I was feeling really nauseous, I think it was something I had eaten, and the only thing I was craving was ice-cold peaches, <laughs> and so I thought it was interesting that, yeah, it's said to soothe um, nausea. So that's nice. What else? Um, 
I, she wrote something that said, Peach has a feeling of longing wistfulness, of hot southern nostalgia that smells like perfume, whiskey, and fairies masquerading as fireflies and glowworms on a summer night. And I thought that was so beautiful. It's so true. Like, peaches have such, like, summery memories of, like, hot summer Georgia peaches. I don't know. And she wrote that peaches are deeply restorative. Of course, they are the cousin of the rose. And if you listen to my episode where I talked about roses and all of that medicine, so peach leaves, peach bark, peach fruit, peach flower, like all of that also has this reminiscent of rose and very restorative and calming and lovely. Traditional of Southern Appalachia, a remedy for hysteria and anxiousness and nervousness. Um, yeah. Appalachian Trail, we gotta go hiking, yes. Okay. Um, safe for children, um, for delicate bodies, for pregnant women. Um, hot flashes and mood swings could be helped maybe um, in menopause and... Yeah, again, you could use leaves, twigs, flowers, pits, and barks. Although the pits, um, I was reading something about prussic acid. So definitely do your research on I'm not a doctor. I'm not even a trained herbalist. I'm just very interested in all of this. So definitely don't take my word for anything here. This is just my interest in what I've looked into. Um, So making a tincture of the pits there is prussic acid but i think that it needs to be like fermented to be a problem and if you're just making like an alcohol tincture it wouldn't be a problem but just eat your peaches and that's fine (laughs) i don't think there's anything wrong with eating peaches and that's all i have to say about peaches but enjoy them um well i could I have two books. One is called Monkey, and let me see, let me grab it. Okay, one is called Monkey, A Journey to the West, the classic Chinese tale of pilgrimage and adventure. Huh, now that I'm reading that, I'm thinking, oh, pilgrimage, adventure. (laughs) And uh, there's one chapter that is about Monkey and what is it called and the immortal peaches I don't know if you know what does it say here immortality peaches and golden elixirs is the name of this chapter and I would read it but honestly like I don't even really like the story very much mm. so monkey I don't know if you have if you've ever watched Dragon Ball but like the story of Dragon Ball is based on this monkey. Um, But anyway, so there's like myth about the immortality peaches. And I also have this book by Neil Gaiman, which is called Norse Mythology. And there is a chapter called The Apples of Immortality. So not peaches, but the apples. And I was thinking about reading this story also, but I don't like this one either. This one, like Loki, is kind of ridiculous, and the end of the story is just so silly. I did not like it. But, yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm not going to tell those stories. But if you're interested in them, let me know, and then I'll tell them next time. I'll just read the back of Monkey, A Journey to the West. This book I read with my student when he was going to go to school in the United States and I actually um that was when I got to go to Asheville and hang out with Ninja Maria who is now Daughters of the Red Sunset. I don't know if you know Maria Ninja Chickens, formerly known as Ninja Chickens, now known as Daughters of the Red Sunset and which is a beautiful ah it's a beautiful, um, I want to say, emprendimiento, like a beautiful thing that she's doing a project 
And you can check her out on Instagram and her website, Daughters of the Red Sunset, and read the story behind the name and see all the beautiful stuff that she's doing. So, yes, but when I got to go hang out with uh, Maria, I had read this book on the plane with my student. So it says, part spiritual pilgrimage, part historical epic. The folk novel Journey to the West, which came to be known as Monkey, is the most popular classic of Asian literature. Originally written in the 16th century, it is the story of the adventures of the rogue trickster Monkey and his encounters with a bizarre cast of characters as he travels to India with the Buddhist pilgrim Tripitaka in the search of sacred scriptures. Much more than a picturesque adventure novel, Monkey is a profound allegory of the struggle that must occur before spiritual transformation is possible. David Kierdian's masterful telling brings the classic of Chinese literature to life in a way that is true to the scope and depth of the original. So, yeah, Monkey is such a trickster. And actually, it's funny because both stories, like, we have Monkey with, like, eating all the peaches, and then we have Loki, who's, like, yeah, stealing the goddess of the apples, and they're both tricksters and kind of pains in the butts. Anyway, okay. That's enough. See you next time. Thanks for sticking with me. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you later. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Thank you.